Hi, my name is Brett Statham. I'm a Microsoft Technical Evangelist, and lately I've been playing around a lot with these 28BYJ-48 5-volt DC stepper motors and the ULN2003 Darlington array chips that you often use to drive them. And in this video, I'd like to share what I've learned in the hopes that it'll make it easier for you to work with these components pretty much from any microcontroller. So we're going to start out by taking a look at the hardware. We'll actually peek inside the 28BYJ motors and see how they work. Then we'll talk about what that ULN2003 chip is and how you can hook up to it. And then we're going to come back and talk about a variety of driving methods. We'll talk about wave driving, and full stepping, and half stepping, and see how to drive the motor from really any microcontroller. So this is microcontroller agnostic. You can take what you learn in this video and work with these components from the microcontroller of your choice. And then we're going to come back and talk about the fact that there's some gears inside the case of the motor. And we'll see what their overall effect is on the behavior of the motor, as well as on how you drive it. And then lastly, we'll point you off to some resources and give you some next steps to see how to move on from here. Now this video is part of my overall IoT series. And you can grab a copy of these slides, as well as the slides and demo files for all the other videos in the series, using the links on the screen. So let's dive right in and take a look at these 28BYJ-48 motors and the corresponding ULN2003 driver boards. So this motor and driver board combination is a pretty popular set of components. You can buy them readily online and typically pretty inexpensively. I usually get them for about $5 US, give or take a couple of dollars. If you took that motor and actually cracked it open and took a look inside of it, you'd see that first of all there's this outer case. Now at the bottom of that case, notice there's eight teeth poking up, and then in the center is this metal post that's coming up. And that's what the rotor actually slips down over. Then inside that case, we'd have two coils wrapped up in these white plastic rings, and interspersed with those coils are some other plates with their own teeth on them. We've got a plastic rotor body with a permanent magnet wrapped around the outside of it. And there's a plate with some gears on it. And then a final gear that's attached to the actual motor shaft that's sticking out of the top plate there. And then you get this little board that has a ULN2003 Darlington Array chip on it and some supporting components. So those coils are just regular magnet wire wrapped around these white plastic rings and a single coil would have two ends however this is a unipolar stepper motor and that means that we also attach to the center of the coil so we'll have a connection for each end of a coil as well as a connection for the center of the coil and with two coils uh, that means I'm going to have a total of four ends and then we connect to the center of both coils but we actually connect those uh, centers to each other as well and that's what we call our common center tap so that leaves us with a total of five leads coming out of this coil assembly uh, the blue and the yellow leads are the ends of one coil the red lead in the center is that center tap that's attached to the center of that coil and then we've got the pink and orange coil again the red lead is also attached to the center of that coil as well then we've got these teeth, right? So at the bottom of the case are these eight teeth that are pointing up, and that makes one layer of teeth. Then interspersed with the coils are three other plates, each with eight teeth on them. And those teeth are spread apart, uh, each one basically being 11.25 degrees uh, from the one next to it. Uh, and that gives us a total of 32 teeth overall. And that's going to end up basically being one tooth per step of this rotor as we make it go around. The rotor then is, as I said, this plastic body that has this permanent magnet wrapped around the outside of it. The permanent magnet is where the magnetic poles are, right? So we're going to use those to line up to those metal teeth based on the magnetic field that's generated by those coils. Sticking up out of the rotor is its own little gear, and that's going to be what meshes up with the other gears on that gear plate. The gears then sit on top of this plate. It's a set of ganged gears. That means that there's uh, 
really two gears on each one of those little plastic bodies. So in fact, you'll notice that this one here has a large set of uh, teeth at the bottom, and then as part of that same plastic unit, there's a set of other teeth that are poking up out of that, and it's called a ganged gear. Uh, but overall, those gears, in addition to uh, the gear that's on the outer motor shaft, combine to give us an overall 64 to 1 gear ratio for this motor. And we'll talk about what that means later on. If we started then to reassemble this motor, we could stick those coils down inside that case and slip the rotor down over that post that's coming out of the outer case. I could then lay down that gear plate with its gears and notice that those gears then mesh up with that nine tooth gear that's sticking up on the rotor body. And then finally stick the final gear with the motor shaft and that top plate right on top of it. Let's next take a look at how its electromagnetics work. So the 28BYJ-48 is a unipolar stepper motor as opposed to a bipolar and there's also some other kinds out there as well and I'll give you some links off to some other references at the end of this video. But with unipolar motors, the advantage is that we don't need to create any electronic circuitry to change the direction of current. We're instead just going to send a voltage through the center tap on our coil and then pull either one end or the other end down to ground to change the direction of current that's going through that portion of the coil. So we start out with that blue lead coming in, right? And it starts to coil around through that magnet wire. And then if I were to actually energize that coil, I'd create a magnetic field, and that magnetic field would be sort of focused on these little metal teeth uh, that we can use to sort of attract the rotor. But rather than continuing directly around, we first come out to this red center tap. Right? And then we go right back in and continue coiling around, and it's the other end of that coil that comes out as that yellow lead. And of course, it's got its own set of teeth associated with it. And that rotor then sits down inside the motor case, centered just right inside of those teeth. So if I were to then take that center tap and attach it to 5 volts DC, and then use that Darlington array to pull the appropriate end of that coil down to ground, I would then send current just from the center tap through the coil down to the blue lead and not send any current through the yellow half of that coil. That current flowing through the blue half of the coil then is going to generate a magnetic field. And the polarity of that magnetic field is going to be based on the right hand rule. That says that if you take your right hand and curl your fingers around in the direction of the flow of current, then your thumb is going to be pointing towards the north pole. Of course, the opposite direction would then be the south pole. And in this case, if our thumb is pointing out of the motor's case, then that means the bottom of the motor case, where those teeth that are sort of associated with the blue coil are, are going to be south poles. So they'll then attract the north poles on that rotor because opposite poles attract. I could then turn off the blue half of that coil and instead pull the yellow end down to ground and energize the yellow portion of the coil, giving its yellow teeth a south pole and attracting the north poles of the rotor further around. And that's sort of how we're going to step this. Remember there's another coil though. First we've got a pink lead coming in with its own set of teeth. It comes out to a center tap and goes back around through the orange half of the coil and it has its own set of teeth. We then wrap the whole thing up in a plug and change the order of the leads so that they are in the proper firing order. We want to fire the blue coil first, then the pink, then the yellow, then the orange. And the red out there at the end is our 5 volt DC power supply. So next, let's take a look at this board with the ULN 2003 chip on it. The ULN 2003 is a Darlington array. It's basically a chip that has seven different Darlington pairs inside it. And a Darlington pair is really just a pair of transistors with a second transistor used to amplify the output current to the first transistor. The benefit is that we can drive a higher demand current uh, from our stepper motor with a low voltage low current output from our microcontroller's digital I.O. pens. Now, in addition to the chip, there's also a handy little socket that you can use to just plug your motor right into. There's some header pins that you can use to hook up to your microcontroller's digital I.O. pins, as well as to ground and your voltage supply. There's even a little jumper that you can remove to break the power circuit to the motor. You could hook a switch up to that if you wanted to, to have sort of an on-off switch for the motor without affecting the microcontroller. And then finally, there's some LEDs with their current limiting resistors. Those LEDs are used to visualize which half of a coil is turned on. So if I energize the blue half of the coil 
the A light turns on. Energize the pink light turns on the blue, the yellow turns on the C, and the orange turns on the D. So this gives me a handy way to tell which coils are currently being energized on the motor. So now let's see how to hook this all up together. First of all, we can take the plug at the end of that motor, just plug it right into the socket on the ULN 2003 driver board. Now the microcontroller could really be any microcontroller. I know on the screen it kind of looks like an Arduino, but it could be a Raspberry Pi, it could be a Spark Core, it could be pretty much any other microcontroller. Now we're going to take the IN1 through IN4 header pins on the driver board and wire those up to digital I.O. pins on your microcontroller. You can really use any digital I.O. pins you want, you'll just want to make sure that you know which pin wires up to which phase on the motor. For the voltage, you might be able to connect to the same power supply as your microcontroller, but you'll want to make sure that the power supply has the right voltage for the motor, as well as enough current to drive both the motor as well as your microcontroller. You'd probably be safer if you just used an external power supply for the motor itself. You just want to make sure that you take the ground for your power supply circuit and connect it up to your microcontroller as well, so that you've got a common ground. Alright, well now that we've seen how the motor works and how to hook it all up to our microcontroller, let's take a look at how we can actually go about driving this thing. So I'll talk about three basic methods for driving the stepper motor. We'll start out talking about wave driving. With wave driving, we're going to fire just a single phase at a time. This is probably the simplest method, but it's likely the least used because the other two methods have some advantages. But with wave driving, again, we're only going to fire a single phase at a time. So if I look through this diagram on the right, in any one time slice, so with step one, just the blue phase is energized, then just the pink phase, then just the yellow, then just the orange. So there's really four phases in this cycle here. And then I just repeat, blue, pink, yellow, orange. Full stepping is going to give me the same step angle as wave driving, so I'm going to get the same precision with full step as I do with wave drive, but I'm going to get double the torque, because with full stepping, we're actually going to energize two phases at a time. So at any one given time slice here, two phases are energized. First the blue and the pink, then the pink and the yellow, then the yellow and the orange, then the blue and the orange. So that's a single cycle through those four phases, and then again, a repeat. Blue and pink, yellow, pink, yellow, orange, orange and blue. The third choice that you have is half stepping. With half stepping, we're actually going to sort of make a combination of wave driving and full stepping. It's, this is going to give us a little bit less torque than full stepping because half of the time two phases will be energized, but half of the time only one phase will be energized. So it's not going to have as much torque as full step. The benefit of half stepping, though, is that we're going to get half the step angle. So we get double the precision, if you will. But with half stepping, we'll start out with just the blue phase, then we'll also turn on the pink and get the blue and the pink. Then just the pink, then the pink and the yellow, then just the yellow, then the yellow and the orange, then just the orange, and then the blue and the orange. So there's actually eight phases in the full cycle here uh, with half stepping. So let's see what that looks like, you know, with our setup that we had earlier. So first of all, to the diagram that we've had, I'm adding in this little pointer arrow sort of at the top of the rotor so you can sort of follow that to watch the rotor as it turns. Also, I'll be calling out down here the different values on the digital I.O. pins, be they ones or zeros, so you can look down there. Then you can also look at the LEDs on the board, whatever, to sort of see what's happening here in the system. But with wave driving, I'm going to get an 11.25 degree step angle for a total of 32 steps for the rotor to go a full 360 degree rotation. We're going to start out by energizing just one of the phases. I'll drive that blue phase high by sending a digital value of 1 or a high value out through my digital I.O. port. That's then going to energize through that ULN2003 board the blue side of that coil and cause the rotor to turn around and align with the blue teeth or the teeth that are associated with the blue coil. Right? Then I turn off that digital I.O. pin and I turn on the next one for the pink coil and the rotor turns to point towards the pink teeth. And that step from the blue to the pink is 11.25 degrees. And then I continue. Energize the yellow coil and then the orange coil by sending their appropriate digital I.O. pins to ones or zeros. And then I can just keep repeating, right? I can go blue, pink, yellow, orange, and I can see that that rotor continues to turn to align to the teeth. 
With full stepping, I'm going to get the same step angle as wave drive. It's just that the steps are going to point at the gap between the teeth rather than centered on a specific tooth. And that's because the magnetic poles are going to be spread across two teeth and the center of it will be in the gap between them. So the rotor will be pointing at the gaps, not the centers of the teeth. But I'm going to start out by energizing the blue and the pink, and the rotor will turn to point at the gap between the two of those. Then I turn off the blue and energize the pink and the yellow, and the rotor will turn to the next gap between the pink and the yellow. So it's, again, the same 11.25 degree angle. It's just gap to gap, not center of tooth to center of tooth, as it was with wave driving. I continue, though. I do yellow and orange, and then blue and orange. The benefit with full stepping, though, is since two coils are energized, the magnetic field is twice as strong, and that's going to give this motor a stronger pullout and holding torque and be able to work with a higher load without slipping. So the third method was half stepping. And again, the benefit with half stepping is that we're going to get half of the step angle. We're now down to a 5.625 degree step angle. We're actually going to start by pointing at the center of the tooth and then to the gap between two teeth then to the center of the next tooth, then to the gap, then to the center, then to the gap, etc. This is going to give us a total of 64 steps needed for that rotor to go a single 360 degree full rotation. The downside of half stepping relative to full stepping is that it doesn't have as much torque because we're only going to have two phases on half of the time. The other half only one phase will be on. So it's a little more torque than wave driving, but not as much torque as full stepping. So let's start out here. The first one will energize just the blue phase it's going to turn the rotor to point to the blue tooth. Then we also turn on the pink coil, and it'll now turn to the point to the gap between the two teeth. Then we turn off the blue and energize just the pink, and now it turns the remainder to point to the pink tooth. So there's that half step angle, tooth to gap to tooth to gap as we go. So we just continue, energize the pink and the yellow, then just the yellow, the yellow and the orange, then just the orange, the orange and the blue, and we're getting those 5.625 degree steps uh, between each one of those uh, phases. So the last thing in terms of driving these motors has to do with the direction. So, so far as I've been firing these phases, I've been firing them in order that makes the rotor go clockwise as I look down on the top of it. If you want it to go the opposite direction, just fire those phases in the reverse order. Start out with orange, then to yellow, then to pink, then to blue, and the rotor will turn the other way. So everything we've talked about so far deals with just the rotor and the teeth and the coils and doesn't take into account those gears. So let's take a look at what the gears do to the behavior of the motor. So remember, sitting on top of the coils and the rotor and, and all that stuff was this plate. And there's a hole in the middle that the rotor shaft pokes through. That rotor shaft is itself a little nine-tooth gear. And then on top of that plate are some other gears. The first is a 32-tooth gear that meshes up with that nine-tooth gear. And when two gears are in mesh, you can figure out their gear ratio simply by dividing the one by the other. And that gives me a 3.555 gear ratio. That means that that inner rotor has to go around 3.555 times for the outer 32 tooth gear to go around just once. Now ganged onto that 32 tooth gear is an 11 tooth gear and it meshes up with a 22 tooth gear which gives me a 2 to 1 gear ratio. On that's a 9 tooth gear that meshes up with a 26 tooth gear for a 2.888 gear ratio and then a final 10 tooth gear meshed up to the 31 tooth gear that's on the bottom of the brass motor shaft that's poking through the top plate and that gives me a 3.1 gear ratio. Now to figure out the gear ratio of the entire system I simply multiply those individual gear ratios up and that gives me a total 63.65 to 1 gear ratio. So not exactly 64, but we'll round it up and just call it a 64 to 1 gear ratio. And what that means is that that inner rotor has to go around a total of 64 full rotations in order for the outer motor shaft, that keyed brass post coming up out of the top plate, to go around just once. And that's going to give you some pretty good precision for this inexpensive motor. So, in fact, if you go back and remember with wave driving or full stepping, it took us 32 steps for a full rotation of the rotor inside, and that was at an 11.25 degree step angle. If we did half stepping, that changed to 64 steps at a 5.625 degree step angle. 
That 64 to 1 gear ratio, though, is going to change things. With that, we now take 64 times the number of rotations, and at 32 steps per rotation, that means it's 2,048 steps uh, for a single motor shaft rotation at a 0.18 degree step angle. And if we half step it, we double the step count to 40, 96 steps per rotation at a 0 0.09 degree step angle. So again, some pretty good precision for such an inexpensive motor. Well, hopefully this video has given you a solid understanding of how the 28BYJ-48 stepper motor works and how you can drive it with the microcontroller of your choice using that ULN2003 driver board. So where do you go from here? Well, first of all, I'll have some follow-up videos on actually driving the motor with the Raspberry Pi, the Arduino, and possibly some others. So stay tuned for those. But in the meantime, here's a couple of resources to get you started. Uh, Tom Igo has a, a great resource on working with stepper motors from the Arduino, uh, as well as a couple of other microcontrollers, uh, and the link is there on the screen. And Douglas W. Jones has more technical overview of them, again, using the link on the screen. And of course, just do an internet search on 28BYJ-48, the microcontroller of your choice, and you'll likely find plenty of resources. So with that, we took a look at the 28BYJ-48 motors and their corresponding ULN2003 driver boards. We talked about driving them with wave driving, full stepping, and half stepping. Talked about how the gears worked and what that did to the behavior of the motor. And talked about some next steps and where to go from here. So with that, go have fun with these components and I'll see you on the next video.